Presiding officer, I am grateful for the opportunity to lead this afternoon's members' debate, recognising both the importance of protecting and conserving Scotland's war memorials and the positive contribution local war memorial associations make to communities across Scotland. I would like to thank members from across the chamber for supporting my motion to enable this debate to take place, and I am looking forward to hearing contributions from other members regarding the War Memorial Associations in their areas. Presiding officer, my constituency of Renfrewshire South takes in a number of the towns and villages of southern and western Renfrewshire and East Renfrewshire. From the large towns of Barhead, where I was brought up, and Johnston, where I live, to the more rural villages of Logwinnock and Up Lamour. Nearly all of the settlements in Renfrewshire South have their own war memorial, and it is an honour to lay reefs at many of them each Remembrance Sunday in my capacity as constituency MSP. And while every community in my constituency was severely impacted by the loss of life sustained in both world wars, there is always a particular poignancy associated with commemorations in the villages. Even in our highly connected world of today, where many people regularly commute to different parts of the country for work, village life is still characterised by a familiarity and a sense of place that is unique. These traits, which are a source of strength, can also make the experience of loss particularly acute. It is therefore understandable why so many of our villages choose to have their own dedicated war memorials. Presiding officer, while there is much I would like to say about the war memorials across Renfrewshire South, I will focus my remarks on one memorial and its association in particular, Neilston. Until as recently as 2015, Neilston was one of only a few villages in Scotland not to have a civic memorial to honour its war dead. While residents of Neilston had long contributed funds to support national war memorials, only the three local soldiers who fell during the Boer War were honoured with a public memorial in the grounds of Neilston Parish Church. Presiding officer, Neilston lost 164 of its young men between 1914 and 1918, including 16 in one day during the 1950 Battle of Lewes, a casualty rate significantly above the national average. It was amidst, amidst growing discomfort at the absence of a fixed memorial with the approaching centenary of the outbreak of the First World War that members of the community established the Neilston War Memorial Association in 2011. Many people from across the village and beyond soon became involved in supporting the association and its objective of funding and delivering a fitting memorial for the more than 200 Neilston lads who made the ultimate sacrifice in both world wars and other conflicts, including Northern Ireland. The War Memorial Association was supported generously by many local businesses and benefited from many individual donations, as well as the spectacular fundraising feat of local man Jimmy Higgins, who along with his cousin John Maguire, walked to 600 miles or so from Neuston to Vimy Ridge in France, site of the battlefield where his grandfather fought in the First World War. One individual in particular who has and continues to make a huge contribution is Matt Drennan, Secretary of the War Memorial Association, who I'm delighted to say has been able to join us today in the public gallery along with his wife, Jacqueline. It was Matt's good friend, the writer and photographer, Keith Fergus, who first told me about Matt's key role in the association. I had the pleasure of meeting both for coffee over the weekend, and I was, frankly, blown away by Matt's passion and encyclopedic knowledge of the impact both world wars had on Newston and the wider area. Forensic in detail and utterly dedicated to his subject, it was a privilege to chat with Matt. When Newston's unique and moving war memorial was erected, for some that may have seemed like job done, but not for Matt. As well as continuing his assiduous research to ensure that all who fell are honoured and that the list of names on the memorial is updated as new information comes to light, Matt was instrumental in obtaining a book of dedication for the following, which now sits in Newston Library. Matt was part of a small team that spent hundreds of hours researching the names and backgrounds of those who lost their lives in the wars. Matt also plays a significant role in the organisation and running of Newston's annual Remembrance Service Parade as well as ensuring that the memorial is well maintained. He has also been a key part of the development of the association into a wider ranging community organisation, helping to secure lottery funding for bagpipe parades, Christmas lights, and later this year, a community fund day in Kingston Park to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. Currently, Matt is working on what I think you will agree, presiding officer, is a special and worthwhile project, and I would like to share it with the chamber before concluding. This Sunday will mark the 75th anniversary of the arrival in Newston of 19 Norwegian refugees. 
Their journey from their native island of Soroya to the safety of the Kingston Park Hostel in Newston is a story both harrowing and heroic. As Hitler's thousand-year Reich began to collapse after barely a decade in early 1945, German forces began the forced de deportation of able-bodied civilians in Norway to forced labour camps. Those islanders of Soroya have resisted and were met with a brutal German retaliation, indiscriminate bombing of civilians, destruction of property and the requisition of food supplies. An audacious rescue mission was launched by the Royal Navy, successfully transporting over 500 civilians to, civilians to safety in Murmansk, Russia. The next stage of the mission involved a perilous convoy skirting the Arctic Circle to transport the refugees to Scotland. Harried by U-boats and one of the final maritime Luftwaffe missions of the war, the convoy also had to contend with atrocious weather. During the course of the treacherous journey, one of the convoy ships, the American Liberty ship SS Henry Bacon, suffered storm damage and became separated from the main convoy. Under heavy enemy fire, the crew valiantly held out for some time, downing several German torpedo bombers. When the vessel was struck, 27 members of the crew went down with the ship, selflessly ensuring that 19 Norwegian refugees found refuge in the lifebo lifeboats before reaching safety in Scotland. To commemorate those American sailors who made the ultimate sacrifice, Matt Drennan is leading the War Memorial, Asso War Memorial Association's efforts to establish a memorial in Kingston Park consisting of 27 Norwegian native trees, one for each life lost on the SS Henry Bacon. Life's given so that refugees could find sanctuary. Their example is one I think we must continuously reflect on and remind others of. Presiding officer, the events of the Second World War, and indeed all wars, must serve as a lesson to us today, demonstrating our capacity for both evil and for good. The work of the Newson War Memorial Association, and Matt Drennan in particular, has perhaps never been more important in helping us to remember, to understand, and to learn. To conclude, presiding officer, I want to put on record my sincere thanks to Matt and everyone involved with the War Memorial Association for all of the work they do. They are a credit to their community, and I wish them the very best in all of their work for the future.